You're watching UNICEF Television. Six months after the deluge, the waters may have subsided, but the impact of this disaster has not. There's no end in sight to the misery, hardship and heartache being endured along the length of the Indus River Basin, from the Himalayan foothills to the Arabian Sea. Noshera was one of the worst hit districts in northwest Pakistan. Many displaced people in this camp lost everything in the flood. With no source of income, the future looks grim. This family remains traumatized by the loss of their seven-year-old daughter, Remat Bibi, crushed by rubble as the waters tore their home apart. Happiness is happiness. Happiness is not in our destiny. I will cry to God and ask his help. I hope he answers my prayers. What else can I do? The wall fell on her and I saw her die in front of me. All I can do is cry. She left me. What will I do without her? I miss her because she used to play with me. For some, the flood was just the start of their troubles. This tent was incinerated as the occupants tried to keep warm. Two children were burned. Fires have caused deaths in the past few months, but this camp will soon close as authorities are encouraging families to return to their areas of origin. People are worried, they are very worried where they are going to go because they don't have anything to go back to, all their household belongings are gone, uh, their livelihood is gone and they don't have any means to set up a new life. In neighbouring Punjab province, the waters have still not fully receded. Not all of the land has natural drainage. Throughout Pakistan, more than 1,000 square kilometres remain submerged. We're on the road to a village called Jakhawala, where bonded labourers grow crops for their landlord and get a paltry wage in return. The community members lost their homes and their crops. They've come back to start afresh. Their water supply is extremely harmful, as the source just beneath the surface contains arsenic. UNICEF has given them the means to draw water from deep underground, beyond the arsenic traces. The people are reluctant to use the groundwater, but unfortunately they don't have any other alternate. So that's the reason they're using this uh, contaminated water. And UNICEF is providing the hand pumps, the everyday hand pumps, which can go deep up to 300 feet. And uh, that's like uh, we are trying our level best to provide safe drinking water to the affected communities. In a camp for flood survivors near Dadu in central Sindh province, Islam Gulzar gave birth in the most primitive conditions. Her daughter will be called Dua, which means prayer. We have lost everything. I'm worried because I have no home. This place is cold. We need a roof over our heads. In the same camp, this family of seven has been driven to the very edge. All they have to eat are two chapatis, flat bread cooked in oil. One of the key problems facing children in the aftermath of the floods is a lack of schools. Thousands were destroyed in the deluge. I had big dreams. I wanted to get an education. I wanted to get a job. I wanted to see the children in my village educated. I wanted to see the village prosper, but the floods came and drowned all our dreams. Across Pakistan, UNICEF is trying to help children return to normality through play, recreation and education. At the end of the learning day, nine-year-old Nazira heads to her shelter. She doesn't have a proper roof over her head. Living in a tent is extremely difficult. Waking up in the morning, sleeping at night is very uncomfortable as it is very cold. We need rations, shelter and clothes. We have nothing. 
Our house and everything in it was washed away. We need everything, everything a human being needs to survive. Six months after surviving the floods, children's natural optimism is returning, especially for those who've never been to school before. For some, the temporary learning centres are their first experience of education. If I went to school, I'd study and get a good job. I want to be a doctor. Because of the floods, we lost everything. We lost our homes. If we had a school, we would be so happy. We don't have a school. No one ever built one here. This is the first time we've had a teacher. I want to study so I can become a police inspector. Then I will catch people who rob and gamble and put them in jail. UNICEF is working to ensure that the children who've had their first taste of school maintain their education. And the onset of winter means the agency must work hard to keep children and families warm, especially in Khaiba Pakhtunkhwa, where snow has begun to fall. Helicopters have been flying essential supplies, such as warm clothing, children's shoes, blankets and newborn kits, to the most vulnerable villages. The children of Pakistan have survived an apocalyptic flood, but now they're at risk from the cold. This is Malcolm Brabant reporting for UNICEF Television. Unite for Children.